after transcription initiates and RNA polymerase is located on a molecule of DNA, now we have to talk about the second step, which is elongation of the growing transcript, the messenger RNA molecule. So as RNA polymerase is moving along the template strand of the DNA, RNA polymerase itself separates the two strands of the DNA molecule so that you have one strand that's called the template strand. The second strand we refer to as the coding strand. And RNA polymerase reads the nucleotide that's here and incorporates the complementary nucleotide there. And this growing strand of RNA exits a hole in this protein and the end of the transcript, that's the part of the messenger RNA molecule that was synthesized first, exits RNA polymerase and is floating around in the nucleus where this transcription step is happening. Okay. This is prokaryotic elongation. And we're going to see that in eukaryotic elongation, there's not much of a difference between this step. Eukaryotic initiation and elongation look fairly similar in this regard. One thing that's different about prokaryotes though, sorry, about eukaryotes, is that as soon as this end of the transcript comes out of RNA polymerase, it gets a 7-methylguanosine cap added. And 7-methylguanosine is a special type of nucleotide. It's a G, essentially, except that it involves a 5' prime to 5' prime linkage. That is, the 5' prime end of the G is stuck to the 5' prime end of the transcript. And there's a specific reason for this, and that's that this 5' prime cap, it's called, we refer to that as the 5' prime cap, and that protects the 5' prime end of this single-stranded molecule of RNA from being degraded. That's one way that the cell controls how much of this gene gets transcribed and how much transcript, how many messenger RNA molecules can accumulate to be then translated into proteins. And part of that process is protecting this RNA molecule from undergoing rapid degradation. So the next step in this process would be RNA polymerase moves along the template strand so let's say that the template strand has this sequence, and that would mean that the coding strand of DNA is its complement, as we know. So when RNA polymerase starts here and reads in this direction and winds up here, it's reading the template strand. And there's no way to know in advance which strand RNA polymerase is going to use as the template strand. But the template strand is the strand that the RNA polymerase molecule is creating base pairing with. So we know that the RNA sequence is going to be complementary to the template strand. The RNA that's produced here is going to have the sequence U because we know that there are U's in RNA and not T's, except that's complementary to the T, so that actually should be an A. Here we have A base pairs with U in the RNA language, A, C, G, U, A. So the key point here is that an RNA molecule is going to be identical in sequence to the coding strand because both of those, the RNA molecule and the coding strand, are both complementary to the template strand. And that's how you tell when you're given the sequence of a messenger RNA molecule which strand is the template strand and which was the coding strand. The RNA and the coding strand will match in sequence. Okay, there's going to be one difference, though, and that's in the polarity of the molecules, and we'll talk about that in class. Now, something else happens in eukaryotes aside from the addition of that cephalon methylguanine cap. And those two things are splicing and polyadenylation. And we're going to talk about splicing next, but now I want to talk about termination. 
So how does RNA polymerase know when to stop transcription? We've looked at how RNA polymerase starts transcription initiation. How does it know where to stop? Big difference between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. In a prokaryote, as that RNA polymerase molecule is moving down a double-stranded piece of DNA and generating that primary transcript, the RNA molecule. In a prokaryote, there's a section of the gene, the DNA, that will encode a section of the RNA that will form a hairpin, which we've already talked about in class before. So the particular DNA sequence at the three prime end of every gene that will cause that RNA molecule after it exits RNA polymerase, that hairpin will actually physically interact like a lock and a key almost with RNA polymerase. And that causes RNA polymerase to literally practically fall off of the DNA molecule and that stops transcription. RNA polymerase is no longer attached to the DNA molecule. Eukaryotes do things a little bit differently in this regard, transcription termination. In this case, as RNA polymerase is, again, moving down the DNA molecule, producing a transcript, there's going to be a section of the gene that encodes a specific sequence in the RNA. It's AAUAAA. That's the polyadenylation signal sequence. And what that does is it's located about 200 or 300 base pairs upstream of the very end of the transcript. And this sequence gets recognized by another protein that's associated with RNA polymerase. When that protein reads that sequence in the RNA molecule, AAU, AAA, a different protein comes in and cuts the transcript off of RNA polymerase. And that happens about 20 base pairs 20 nucleotides downstream towards the three prime end and releases this RNA molecule. So now you have an RNA molecule that's floating around in the nucleus that has that signal sequence and then about 20 more nucleotides. And by the way, what's up here? That's the five prime end and it's going to have the seven methyl guanine cap on it. The last step in eukaryotic transcription termination is that at the very three prime end of the transcript, after it gets cut about 20 nucleotides downstream of that poly A signal sequence, the enzyme poly A polymerase does exactly that. It polymerizes or adds poly A, a string of A's to the end of that transcript. And this is called the three prime tail or the poly A, many A tail. And that's how transcription terminates in eukaryotes.